These men are trying to meet up with teenagers online. Do you have kids of your own? Yeah. What would they think of this? They probably disown me. They think they're talking to actual teenagers, but in reality, they're talking to an adult decoy posing as one on the other end. You say 14? Yeah. Oh my god, that's too young. I act older though. You having a good Saturday night? How's it going? Not only is it immoral and downright disgusting, but it's illegal. And these guys know that very well. You won't believe some of their excuses. I don't have no intentions to try to do anything, though, buddy. You don't? I don't. What about when you said that you wanted to slide your hands up and down her back? You talking to me like that at first. They come in all different shapes and sizes. It, I, this poor judge and I might hurt to ever continue the conversations. Just want to let you know you've you just been skeeted. What is skeeted? No, I'm Skeet Hansen with the Predatorial Investigation Unit. I'm Skeet Hansen with the Predatorial Investigation Unit. I'm Skeet Hansen with the Predatorial Investigation Unit. I'm Skeet Hansen with the Predatorial Investigation Unit, and these are the dangers of your kids using the internet unsupervised. I hope you've brought your appetite because we've got a lot of predator pasta to dish out here. Hi there, ladies and gentlemen. Quick announcement before we get this video started. As of recently, YouTube has been just whiling out, uh, deleting many videos on this channel, and I just want to say if you're looking for an in particular video and you can't find it on this channel, it will be on my Rumble, so be sure to give me a follow on Rumble. The link will be in the description down below for that. And while you're at it, be sure to follow me on all the other social medias. Links will also be in the uh, description down below for those. And uh, that's, that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, let's, uh, let's go ahead and uh, get started here. Ah, the great city of Cincinnati, Ohio. Home to over 300,000 residents. Some of those residents being teens who were vulnerable to solicitation from online predators. We conducted an investigation to find out just how easily this could happen. We set up an online profile, posing as a teen girl, in an attempt to scout out any potential predators. Only to come across this Ralph fellow. He's the latest suspect in our investigations. His name may be Ralph, but I like to call him Wreck-It Ralph. He doesn't have any ties to the Disney character, but he did wreck his life when he drove over two hours to our sting house to meet who he thought was a 13-year-old girl. Ralph was a very bad boy, I guess you could say. He's currently going through a divorce with his soon-to-be ex-wife, and he has kids of his own. I wonder what they would think of this. When he arrived, he peeked through the door window and spotted our security guard. Is it haunted? <laughs> huh? Is it haunted? But even that didn't stop him from coming inside to pursue his prey. We somehow convinced him that he was just seeing things. He thought that the place was haunted. In fact, he was so spooked when he met me face to face that he couldn't even hold his bladder. Go to the bathroom. Um, Ralph, I think it's best if you just sit tight. We all just sit here and just wait for the police. I told you that uh, I had problems with. I, I I understand. Yeah, I get UTIs like really easy, and when I gotta go, I gotta go. But we'll get into that later on. For now, take a look at some of his chat log. The girl says that she's 13 and asks Ralph if he's okay with that. Ralph says, "I like younger. Do you like older?" The girl says, "Yeah, she doesn't mind." Ralph says. You're not a cop or anything, are you? The girl says no, lol. Ralph says, I'd like to take your virginity, just as long as there's no police affiliation. Wreck-It Ralph was grinning ear to ear when he first came into the house. 
but it soon disappeared when I walked out of the pantry to have a word with him. We came across this Ralph fellow in a teen kick group. Now, it's pretty crazy that a teen kick group even exists. And um, you can just, you know, imagine the sort of individuals that would be in such a group. You know, people like, uh, like, like Ralphie here is, is what I'm getting at. Um, he chatted with this alleged 13-year-old girl for uh, a few weeks on end. The conversations did of course get sexual after some point. Now being that we came across him on the Kick app, which is not so much a social media app, rather a private messaging app, um, we didn't know too much about Ralph at all. We had no idea he was married and had kids of his own until he showed up to our, our sting house on that night. I believe it was a Friday night back in October when we were en route to uh, Cincinnati to do this investigation. We had already been in contact with Ralph for a few weeks at this point, of course, so he was hot and ready to meet up with, with this 13-year-old girl. Now, Ralph was about two hours from Cincinnati. We were about three and a half from Detroit, so it took us a little bit longer to get there than it took him. However, Ralph was so excited and anxious to meet this girl that he actually drove over to Cincinnati from his hometown and waited for you know the girl to give him the the address of where to meet up at while he was sitting there waiting for the exact address we were still en route so we couldn't communicate with him after Ralph didn't hear from the girl for some time he decided to go ahead and turn around and drive back home. Now, he drove about an hour back to um, where he came from. And when we were able to, we then messaged him and told him to go ahead and turn around and, and come back, and we sent him the exact address. And sure enough, without skipping a beat, uh, Ralph turned around and drove a whole hour back the other way. Now, we knew that Ralph was pretty close, but we didn't know just how close because he wasn't answering. So we did set up a couple of the cameras, but we weren't able to set up all the cameras because Ralph ended up getting there much earlier than expected. Now, usually when we're waiting on these guys, they'll send a text message saying that, you know, I'm about five minutes away or I just pulled up, you know, come to the door, that sort of thing. But, uh, not Ralph. He was, he was different. He walks right up to the porch, right up to the door, looks inside, and knocks on it. Now, unfortunately, the way this house was structured, um, from the door window, you could look in and sort of see some of the kitchen. And when Ralph looked in, he did spot our security guard. He was sitting at the island, uh, stuffing his face with cookies, sort of uh, slacking on the job. Now, of course, seeing this, Ralph got spooked and ran off the porch, as, as anyone would. And after seeing this, you would think anyone in, you know, Ralph's position would leave the premises, drive off in a hurry, and be on their way, you know, back home. But again, not Ralph. Ralph was, uh, Ralph was different. Even after he blatantly saw our security guard, we somehow convinced Ralph that no one was in the house and he was, he was just, just seeing things. His desire in seeing this 13-year-old girl was so much stronger than his belief in what his eyes had just witnessed. Um, just mind-boggling. I you know, couldn't believe it. So once we knew that Ralph was convinced and he was on his way back up to the porch to meet this um, this 13-year-old girl. We fired up the cameras and got into position. Yeah, um, I'll let you talk to him for like maybe two, three minutes.
Was anyone there? She, she said he saw us. I don't know. Well, go, go, just, just take, take one more peek. Just, just take one more peek. Yeah, she said he, he peeked through the door, I guess. He, he just, he just said okay to meeting at the front door. He said okay to meeting at the front door. I, I guess she's like talking him out of it. He, but she, she said you should go to the front right now and just pretend to be on your phone. Not, not all the way out there, just like at the, just like, just out, like on the porch. Just like stand on the porch and act like you're on the phone. Okay, let's just get in here and see what, let's see what happens. We got Ralph to come inside the house, but getting him to eat a cookie was a bigger challenge. I guess he had a taste for something else. Do you want a cookie? Oh, good. Why? <laughs> well, if you, if you can sit right there and we can talk for a little bit first. I'm just nervous. I'm sorry. What? I'm just nervous. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, it's the worst thing I've What? It's the worst thing I've what guy? The guy that I told you to see. But there's no one here. Is it haunted? <laughs> huh? Is it haunted? I don't know. They're scaring me. <laughs> what? I'm serious. I'm not serious. There's a guy in here. It's just me. You're scaring me. I'm, I've been out here every day. Really. And this is the moment where Ralph's world turns upside down. The last thing he was expecting was for me to walk out of the pantry. Looks like you've seen a ghost. What? Looks like you've seen a ghost there. How are you? I'm good. Uh, I'm Skeet Hansen, Predatory Investigation Unit. Hmm? I'm with the Predatory Investigation Units here. Why don't you have a seat for me right there? I have a couple of questions here for you, if you wouldn't mind. So, what's your name? What? What's your name? Ralph. Ralph. Ralph what? Uh, do you have your ID on you, Ralph? No, I mean, no. Not on you. Were you driving without a license? No. I got no. a license. Where is it? In the car. In the car. Okay. Well, I just have a couple questions here for you. So, uh, what brings you here today? I just wanted to meet. Meet who? Becca. Becca. And how old is Becca? She told me she was 13. And how old are you? 57. 57. Didn't want to, I mean... Didn't want to what? Do anything but meet her. You just wanted to meet her. And what makes you think it's okay for a 57-year-old man to meet a 13-year-old girl who's home alone? Oh, I think that was one of the ghosts there. Uh, she just seemed like she... Needed a guy. Like she needed a guy. Ne needed a, like a father figure. Oh, like a father figure. So you were going to be more of like a, like a mentor to her. I was going to, I don't know. Is that why you asked, asked her if she was a cop? Did, is something humorous here, Ralph? No, I just. You, you just what? I just knew this was a, a trap. I you knew it was a trap. So why did you walk in here? Just, I told you, just to meet her. Just, a, just to meet her. Hmm. It's interesting. You ask her what she wants to do. You say, do you want to hook up or just chat? 
You see, if you ever change your mind and want to hook up, then you're all good with that. So it looks like you wanted to hook up with her. What do you mean by hook up? Me. 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 So not, not have sex and take her virginity, like you said here, when you asked her if she was a virgin and you asked her if she had experience. Why would you ask her that? I don't know. You don't know. There's got to be some reason, Ralph. I mean, help me understand I've here. Got, I've got problems with my thing. I, I can't get... With your... You have problems with what? With my... Private. Private. Area. Private area. Your, your, I, your, 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 I had operations and I... You have a problem with, it in your, with your... Yeah. And I can't get a... a a full erection. So, so was a 13-year-old girl supposed to help you no, get no, there? No, no, it's no. not. I wasn't a I minute. Mean, now, Ralph claimed that he wasn't going to do what he said he was going to do in the chat log because he physically couldn't do it due to some sort of, uh, you know, issue he has, uh, you know, down there we're not sure on all the uh, specifics on that but his claim of i wouldn't have done it because i physically couldn't have done it is just you know uh, just a terrible excuse it doesn't justify saying what he was saying in the chat logs to this 13 year old girl so i'm wondering if he could have physically done it what would his excuse then be for saying the things in this chat log? It's a very sorry excuse. I mean, it is complete, utter bullshit. There's no way I could have done it. There's it. no way you could have done it. No, it doesn't get firm enough. Oh, it doesn't get, oh, so it doesn't get firm enough for you to, uh, a 13 year old girl is what you're saying. Wasn't intending on well, you, you do know that the age of 13 is not the age of consent. It's illegal for an adult to right. I know have that. intercourse with a 13-year-old girl. And you're talking about taking her virginity here. You say, I can't wait to see you as long as there is no police affiliation. Why, why are you so concerned about police if you were just coming to meet her and talk to her? Like you said. Because I don't know if... Meeting and talking to her like that is illegal or not, but... You don't know if it's illegal. Well, it is illegal to engage in a conversation like this online with someone who you think is 13. Y you are aware of that, Ralph. It is illegal. It is. So why did you, you do it? You talk like that to him? No, Ralph, that is soliciting a minor online right. for I sex. Didn't know that. You didn't know that. I didn't know. And just, the, I mean, the fact that you're here right now just, just says a lot as well. You say, maybe you can come over here and you'll see what happens. And then you say, I can't wait to slowly undress you. Would you rather lose your virginity in a home or in a hotel? She says that her mom's going to be leaving. You say, I could go down on you when she does. So, I mean, you don't need a full-blown erection to do that. No, I don't. So, why'd you say that then? You know, Ralph, it sounds to me like you were, you came over here to go down on a 13 year old girl when she was home alone and then most likely have sex with her. That's what, that's what I've got here. You asked her if she's had it done to her yet. You say you can't wait to do it to her and touch her naked body and soft skin. And then you ask her if she, keeps her blank shaved. Ask how big her breasts are. You say the small ones are the ones that you like. This is a very dirty chat log here that you're having with this 13-year-old girl, Ralph. Now keep in mind, Ralph here is still living at home with his soon-to-be ex-wife. When she finds out about this, I bet she'll have her foot so far up his ass that he won't be able to sit right anymore. In similar scenarios of physical abuse, it's important to make sure that you're covered, legally. 
And that's where today's video sponsor, Morgan & Morgan, comes into play. Size matters, and Morgan & Morgan is America's biggest injury law firm with over 800 attorneys operating nationwide. If you ever go through an injury of any kind, whether it be a slip and fall at your workplace or an unforeseen event when you're driving your vehicle, Morgan & Morgan will fight for you without even charging you up front. That's right, they won't charge you a dime unless you win the case. There's no need to feel sorry if you ever have to sue someone. Think about it like this. You're not suing the individual, you're suing their insurance company who has billions of dollars in the bank. You're entitled to the compensation that you deserve. If you're ever injured in an accident, you can check out Morgan & Morgan. Their fee is free, unless they win. For more information, go to forthepeople.com slash skeeter, or dial pound law from your cell phone. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. You're you're sorry. Well, what are you sorry for? For having the conversation with her. For having the conversation here with her. Wow. Well, Raph, and, and I mean it. It just goes on, and and I mean you're spamming her, blowing her up with messages, and I guess you made prior plans before. You say it's the 11th, which is today. Will your mom be out of town tonight? I want to see you if she is, and I want to take your virginity. And then it gets even more graphic. You tell her how amazing it'll be. You say that you can't wait to feel her tight little blank yeah. stretching around your your your. But I can't. Now, how are you planning to do that if you, if you can't even get it up? I don't know. I, could, I couldn't. I just said it. You just so you just you just say things. Yeah. To a, to thirteen year old girls. Um. I mean, what do you have to say for yourself, Ralph? I'm embarrassed. You're embarrassed. I'm appalled at myself. As you should be. I mean, this is not a good look at all, and it's illegal. Do you have kids of your own? Yeah. How old are they? 29, 32, and 33. Wow, three kids. What would they think of this? They probably disown me. Think they disown you? Are you married? Going through a divorce. Going through a divorce, but you're married. Presently, yes. I mean, Ralph, I, I don't. I, I have no words. I mean, this is just. You're you're letting a lot of people down here. It seems. I know. I mean, so uh, help me understand. What makes a man do this sort of thing? I mean, you even ran ran off there when you knocked on the door, because you thought you saw someone. But you still couldn't resist the urge, it seems, to come and have sex with a 13-year-old girl. Is, is the, the urge that strong, Ralph? How far did you drive to come here? Two hours. Two hours. And I was halfway back home, and she convinced me to turn around. So you drove a total of three hours to get here? Yeah. And then on the way back, that'll be a grand total of... Five hours, if my math is right. All to have sex with a 13 year old girl. To meet a 13, to meet her. That's what you say, but the chat log here says otherwise. So, I, I, I don't know, Ralph, what do, you, what do you think should happen to you? Well, I know it won't happen again. It's it won't sure. happen again. But we're gonna make sure about that. I know. Okay. So am I arrested? That's not up to me to decide. That's going to be up to the Cincinnati Police Department and what they want to do with it, okay? I'm just talking to you face-to-face -face here. What's that? I'm just talking to you face-to-face -face here, trying to get answers from you and sort of understand your thinking here, all right. all right? Is that all you have to say for yourself? It'll never happen again. It'll never happen again. And then that's it. Okay. I got you. Okay, Ralph. Well, if you'll I just... I wish this would have never happened to begin with. Well, we all wish that, but, you know, here you are in this house to meet a 13-year-old girl. So, I mean, where do we go from here? Well, it's up to you guys, isn't it? Um, 
I, I guess that is so. So what I'm um, going to do here is we're gonna get the police down here and let them know what's going on. And um, hopefully they can get your information and we'll see what they want to do and we'll just kind of, we'll kind of go from there. All right? I guess. Okay. Cincinnati 911, what is the address to your emergency? I mean, exactly what's happening. Okay, so I just wanted to report a 57-year-old man that drove two hours from, where is it? Ralph? From to meet who he thought was a 13-year-old girl for illicit acts. Um, this is a sting operation, so we just wanted to know if we can get an officer around here to address the situation and kind of um, explain what's going on and see um, if okay. anything... Is yeah. he a male black, white, Asian? He is a Caucasian male. Male white? Yes. Okay. And you say 57, what's he wearing? 57, a uh, gray zip-up jacket. Looks like we have blue jeans here. Did you conduct this operation or? Uh, yes, I did. Okay, that's okay. Yep. Okay, You're, are you law enforcement or? Uh, no, just a third party. Okay, okay. All right, and you've got him there where he can't leave? Uh, he's just sitting comfy in the chair in the kitchen and we do have um, our security guard here as well as the decoy. An armed security guard? Uh, yes, that's correct. Okay. Okay, I'll have officers come out. Okay, appreciate it. All right. All right, thank you. Bye. Well, Raph, if that's all you have to say, I do just need to let you know that um, I'm Skeet Hansen with the Predatorial Investigation Unit, and um, we are doing a, an online series about adults who try to meet up with teens online for sex. And just want to make sure that's that's all you that's all you have to say there. Or if there's anything else you had to say to your friends or family, you know, now would be the you know the time to do it. What was that? If you have anything to say to your friends or family or anyone, now now would be the time to to do it to say something for yourself. I'm just having a, a rough time right now with the marriage and the divorce and. Okay. It's, it's nice to have somebody to talk to and it seemed like we... But I don't understand why that someone can't be an adult. Huh? Why can't that someone be an adult? Why does that have to be a 13 year old girl? I have, there's adults on that site too that I talk to. Okay. But they're all from Texas, California, Florida. You're telling me there's not one adult around your area that you can talk to, that wants to talk to you? Not one adult. I, mean, I, I talk to them, but I don't want friends to know everything. So you decide you drive two hours to meet a, an underage girl instead. Why not drive two hours to meet an adult? I would have if they all didn't want money. If you didn't want money? If they all didn't want money? Yeah. Gotcha. Well, Ralph, I gotta say, you really wrecked your life by coming in here today. I mean, I just, just have no words. It's just a train wreck. Well, we will just um, sit tight for the police then. Yeah, you know, it's, you, you just, you gotta wonder what, you know, what makes a man. <clears throat> I'm also on my second divorce. Are you? <laughs> hmm, yeah, maybe I should stray away from that then. Good call. Can you go to the bathroom? Um, Ralph, I think it's best if you just sit tight, we all just sit here and just wait for the police. Um, I told you that I had, I had problems with... I, I, I understand. And I get UTIs like really easy. And when I gotta go, I gotta go. 
I, I understand. Pat me down? Yeah, just to make sure. Fine. Just want to make sure everybody's safe. Mom, there's no issues with it. Anything that's going to quote me? I've got a pocket in my left pocket. Anything that's going to grab it? Yeah, we get it. The pins are kind of tight. This was the first time that an alleged predator that I was talking to uh, couldn't hold his bladder. He did mention that he did go through a few um, procedures uh, down, in, down in that area that sort of would pro prohibit him from holding his bladder in certain situations. And when he's got to go, he's got to go, so he says. So Ralph asks if he can use the bathroom. I, of course, uh, at first, you know, say, no, I don't think it's a, a good idea for, you know, an alleged predator to be in a room where we can't see him while we're waiting for the police to arrive. But with the given circumstances, we went ahead and let Ralph go, go ahead and use the, use the restroom so he didn't, uh, you know, urinate on, on himself. On, uh, on the chair in the Airbnb. You know, those, those Airbnb fees uh, with the cleanup can get rather expensive, so you don't wanna deal with that. But before he went and used the bathroom, we had to make sure that he didn't have anything on him that he could use to hurt himself or worse. So, uh, you know, our security guard, Chet, went ahead and patted Ralph down to you know make sure he didn't have anything on him. And, Turned out he did have a pocket knife. You never really know what these individuals are going to be bringing with them in these scenarios. So it is a good thing that we do have a uh, you know a designated security guard to make sure that nothing gets too out of hand. You doing all right in there? Yeah. What's up? Um, well, I just wait, wait till they knock, I guess. Hi, officer Dylan. I think the gentleman we called about is just in the kitchen here. Uh, just, just this way. Um, so basically, we run this sort of sting operation where we catch online predators. Um, this man drove a couple hours to meet who he thought was a 13-year-old girl for illicit acts. Uh, we do have all the uh, screenshots, uh, chat logs uh, saved. Um, so he came here to talk to, uh, th this is our, our decoy. He thought that she was uh, 13, and uh, I came out and talked to him for a bit, and uh, then we, we called you guys, basically. Okay. So I'm like, three balls here. Sir, you got an idea. Give me the car. Where's your car? What, uh, what car is it? Red Honda. Is it registered to you? Yeah. Okay. Red Honda what? Sir. Just hang out. What's your name, sir? Ralph. Ralph what? Stand up for me, all right? Who's gonna detain you for a second, all right? So just put your hands on your back. You gotta look your brain. I did. All right. Uh, yeah. Just leave it where it's at. Okay. Fine. Okay. Just leave it where it's at. Okay. 
but he should have a small part in that comes from a fund. Sure. When the police arrived on scene, um, I briefed them on the situation, and um, Ralph was detained for the time being. He was taken outside for questioning with a group of officers. Meanwhile, I went in another room and had a one-on-one -on -one discussion with another officer about the uh, situation. Now, the Cincinnati Police Department isn't used to dealing with uh, this sort of thing, obviously, so they had to call out the chief, uh, sort of wake him up out of bed to, uh, to show up and address the situation. When the chief arrived, he asked me to cut the cameras and we respectfully did so. Now after talking with the chief, um, and we weren't aware of this before, but apparently in the state of Ohio, um, no charges or convictions can be made if this sort of sting operation is not conducted by a law enforcement official. And obviously we are not law enforcement, we're just a privately owned and operated organization. So unfortunately, Ralph will not be charged with the findings that we have obtained, but the incident was reported and filed and his soon to be ex-wife will know about this. And this situation might just come back to bite Ralph in court during his divorce. You never know. So at the end of the night, the police unfortunately had to let Ralph go and have him be on his way, you know, two hours back home to, um, you know, to where he lived. And hopefully that's the last that we will be seeing of Wreck-It Ralph. Um, you know, I really hope that he has learned a valuable lesson from this whole thing and we'll be keeping an eye out for him. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Disquita Predator. If you did, be sure to leave the video a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you're feeling up to it, hit the join button down below or the link in the description to become a YouTube member and receive exclusive perks on this channel. Well, I've been your host, Skeet Hansen, and uh, that's going to be a cut, boys and girls. Uh, let's go get fucking drunk. <laughs>